Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 57 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am just getting in and taking a look around. Uh, I'm still really low on Ender Pearls, and I would love to be able to do something about that. So I might have to start working on a solution to get me just a few more Ender Pearls. Not a ton, but a few. Uh, so that's kind of one thing I want to start thinking about a possible way to do. So while I'm coming up with a good plan for that, I mean... I could always go visit the end, but me and the Endermen, well, they haven't been harassing me too much this season. I mean, they've been a little bit of a nuisance. Like, they stop by every now and then to kind of keep an eye on me and make sure I'm not doing too much, I guess. But for the most part, they've been kind of well-behaved, so I really don't want to poke them too hard and go visit their dimension. Because basically, if I were to go over there and visit, I know the Ender Dragon would be killing me right up front, so I'd have to take her down. And, and that would start all kinds of warring and stuff, so, I mean, as long as they're leaving me me alone for now I think I'm not gonna go harass them too much uh, but what I do want to do is come up with a better solution so I've gotten a few more of those ender lily seeds um, that I think I th I'm guessing my mining operation has picked up um, so I'm waiting to get more ender pearls for now I just kind of planted them outside right by my house so that I know that they're there once these guys grow I'll be able to use the ender pearls that I get from them to make more end stone and then plant them properly on end stone instead of just on grass but at least you know I've kind of got something going. So what I want to start working on today is it's time to get uh, started on a mod that we haven't really used this season yet, and it's one of my favorites. It's time to take a look at Miscraft. Uh, I think it's time we start looking at Miscraft because there's a couple things going on that are frustrating to me. Uh, number one, my nether portal, for some weird reason, has changed its output location. When I created this nether portal a long time ago, like, it created this in here and everything was good. Now when I step through the um, nether portal in the nether to head back to my main base back at home, for some reason, all of a sudden, instead of linking back to where I was, it links to wherever the heck this is. I don't know. Like, I'm many blocks south. Let's see, that's negative 128.58. This is negative 172.202. So I'm like 150, almost 200 blocks away from my base, so I don't know what's up with that. And since I call it a bug, I don't mind teleporting myself back here because really the, the, the exit portal should be exiting me right here. So what's up with that? I don't know. Uh, so I do have to figure out uh, a solution to that. So obviously a really good and simple solution would be to stop using nether portals because they are boring and vanilla. We are gonna use Miscraft. Um, and then I would uh, like to start looking at making, I don't know, maybe some kind of uh, cool Miscraft related stuff. Now, how am I for ink? Because there's a couple things you need for Miscraft. First off, you need some ink. Oh, well, I've got 62 of them, so that's pretty good, actually. I'm not doing too bad on ink. How am I for leather? I've got 60 of them. Nice. Um, and I can just, yeah, awesome. So I've got a good amount of leather. That's looking good. We've got even more requestable because we had some in here before my cows mysteriously died, and at which point I have to get more somehow. Uh, so the grinder, obviously not running, not doing much, but we've got a few extra pieces of leather just hanging out over here. All right, not too shabby. Um, I think that'll probably be at least enough to get us started with Miscraft. So Miscraft is a mod that's really cool. It basically allows you to create your own custom dimensions. Now you can't customize them too much at the beginning. You have to actually do a little bit of work to get what you need to customize it. So what I'm going to do is go through this episode and kind of explain to you all the facets of Miscraft, how it all works, and uh, how you can start making your own ages or dimensions in Minecraft that are fully customized to what you want them to be. And then later down the line, we'll probably kick it up a notch and make a little bit of some crazy dimensions that should be a lot of fun to mess around with. Uh, we can do some really powerful stuff with Miscraft once we really get into it. So I think I'm going to turn this room right here into my Miscraft room. Does that sound like a good plan? I think so. So I'm gonna start getting some of the stuff we need ready, and I'll be back when it's time to roll. All right guys, so a, th a few things we're gonna need here. Uh, first off, we're going to need the ink mixer. This guy's gonna be required to ma mix the uh, magical inks you're gonna need to create some of the items for Miscraft. We're also going to need a book binder here. This guy is going to bind all the different pages of your uh, Miscraft linking book and uh, descriptive books together so that you can uh, travel to your different ages. Uh, so those are the two main blocks that you're going to be looking at. And then finally the third block here you're going to want is a writing desk. This guy is going to be where you're going to be creating all your awesome customized ages. Uh, so it looks like a lot of fun to play around with. Let's take a look. So right in here I think I'm going to just kind of Pop down maybe you and then you. Does that sound like a plan? 
There it goes. Look at that. Fancy looking. Uh, so we've got a very cool new version of Miscraft. And we can throw the ink mixer down. Yeah, look at that. So the Miscraft writing desk has been updated just a little bit. Uh, what do we need to go along with this stuff? Well, we're going to need some paper. All right, we're going to need more paper than that. Yoink. Stack of paper ought to do. How am I for sugar cane, by the way? I'm pretty much out at this point. I should really build a sugarcane automation step at some point, but it's just so quick and easy to be able to do this. Cool. Um, at some point, I'll automate sugarcane production. I've got a couple cool ways to do it. Hooray. So paper goes in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw most of the paper that I've got in here. And what's nice is it actually renders the paper being in the uh, writing desk, so it's pretty cool to check out. Uh, we're also going to need some leather, like I told you guys, and we're going to need some ink. So I'll grab some leather, and we're going to want some ink, but here's the deal. Ink vials is what we want, and that is a water bottle and two black dyes. So we're going to basically need two ink sacks. So how do I do for water bottles? I'm all right. I've got three of them at the moment. Uh, however... No, my AE system doesn't know how to make water bottles. Uh, do you know how to craft bottles in general? Probably not. So maybe we can go show it how to do that real quick, and I'll show you guys another neat uh, solution to creating um, automation with uh, uh, applied energistics here. So real simple, making bottles, of course, is just a regular old crafting recipe. So we toss that into our molecular assembler chamber, and we've got uh, the ability to craft bottles right away. So how do we convert uh, bottles into water bottles? Well. That's the question. So uh, basically all you have to do is right click on a pool of water, right? Right. So let's get that set up. So how can we fill up water bottles? Well, I'm glad you asked because we've got a nifty solution to this. So basically, a uh, water bottle simply is right click on a pool of water and it'll fill it with water, right? And the cool thing about it is it doesn't actually use up the pool of water, so we don't have to create an infinite water source. We can do it with just one block of water. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get an autonomous activator because that can right click things, right? Right. Let's face it downwards. Uh, let's see, which way is down? I think that way is facing down, right? Um, and let's see, so you're doing that there. I'm going to set the import to the top, or what's basically the top now. And then, um, yeah, you can be the export. And then what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to be right-clicking this thing. And what I'm going to do is set it to um, only right-click the item that goes into the first slot right there like that. Okay, so what happens is if I place a water bottle into the first slot, it should right click it. Cool. Now if we leave it in there for too long, it'll actually drink it because it's right clicking and that's kind of a little bit silly. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that and make sure that we don't run into that problem, but it should be all right. So I'm going to craft myself a few more glass bottles and then it's a simple matter of using that ME interface to say go ahead and uh, insert items into here in order to craft. And what am I going to say? I'm going to say that one water bottle equal or one bottle equals one water bottle so you place a bottle into this inventory below here and you're going to get a water bottle out pretty reliably uh we're gonna have to keep an eye on it though like i said because sometimes it'll drink it if it's you know running too long uh so that looks cool you're enabled low that looks good everything is good here i wonder if i sneak right click this thing if i set you to sneaking mode will you not drink it Nah, you still drink it. I wanted to see if I could get him not to drink it. Oh well, that's fine with me. Why well, drink water anyway? It's not like it does anything for you, does it? Does it even fill your hunger at all? Seems like a waste of time to me. All right, so uh, we've now taught this thing that if you place a glass bottle in here, you'll get a water bottle out. So all we have to do is pull water bottles out. However, in the past, you've seen me using basic import buses, which basically import anything. You can't define what is getting pulled out of the machine and into the uh, AE network. And that's pretty good for induction furnaces and other blocks because you're basically saying, you know, anything that's, you know, ready to be pulled out, just pull it out. I don't care what it is. I mean, you put it in here to get macerated, pull it out. I don't care. Uh, this guy, on the other hand, is a little different. If we did that, what might happen is the import bus might pull the item out before it gets converted into a water bottle. So, like, it might, like, drop it in and pull it out. And then, oops, that's not good. So we want to make sure we pull it out real quick, right? So, um, or we want to pull out the right item. We don't want to pull it out before it turns into a water bottle. So I'm going to use the precision import bus. And to make that, you simply go ahead and combine your basic import bus with a basic processor, and you've got the precision import bus. This guy is going to be a little bit more useful for us. So let's go ahead and hook him up like so, and like so. And now everybody's a friend. 
So what we've got here is the precision import bus. You can control when it pulls items in based on redstone signal. The basic one is always sucking items into the network. With precision, you can say, you know, um, it's active when it's not receiving a signal, it's active when it is receiving a signal, it activates once per pulse, or it's always active. Uh, you can also set up stack mode, so you can move one item at a time, or you can go ahead and move um, a stack of items at a time. So that's pretty much your option there. So I'm going to move single items, and I'm going to say only pull out um, water bottles. So we can filter this guy as well, which is nice. So only water bottles get pulled out. That way it won't suck out. So if we, uh, for example, without this configuration, okay, and we turned off this machine just so it doesn't, uh, you know, work. Uh, we'll see here that it's going to go ahead and pull out the water bottle. We don't want that. So when we put the water bottle in here and we put this thing in, it's not going to pull it out until it turns into a water bottle. Ta-da! And now we've got water bottles. How cool is that? So now I should be able to come over here and say, hey, um, you know, do me a favor, craft me a water bottle, or let's say four of them. So it should go ahead and craft uh, bottles, and now it's making water bottles, and we can see very quickly that it's working like a charm. Nice. So I'm going to put all these guys in, and then finally, um, just because I like to do it, I'm going to go ahead and craft myself uh, the ink vial. So let's go ahead and set up the AE system to do that. I just need some actual ink. I don't want to use those little tree things, though at some point I should really build one of those um, tree farm guys. Okay, encode this dude, and now I should be able to request ink vials of any number. And this water bottle thing, by the way, will also help um, if you're building any kind of automation built around, let's say, potions. So keep that in mind. All right, so we've got this whole thing ready to roll. Let's go and play around with Miscraft. So one of the things you need to use your ink files for is at the writing desk, uh, which is going to be pretty handy. It's going to allow you to copy some of the miscraft pages that we're about to find. Uh, the other thing that you absolutely need to use them for is for the ink mixer, which makes sense because it has ink in the name of the block, so you can go ahead and assume that you're going to be using ink in it. Uh, the ink mixer is the um, block that you're going to want to use to create link panels. Now you can do multiple things with this block, but the most basic function is to create a simple link panel, which is necessary for creating two things. Uh, the link Link panel will be crafting uh, both the descriptive books and the linking books. So these guys are both pretty important. Descriptive books are used to create dimensions. When you create a descriptive book, you're creating a new dimension in Minecraft. Or if you want to think of it in the Miscraft lore way of things, you're creating a new age. And you're basically uh, creating it. Now actually in Miscraft lore, there's a big contentious question as to whether or not you're actually creating the dimension or if the dimension already existed and you're just finding your way to it by creating the descriptive book. Nobody's really sure. Uh, but long story short, you've got uh, a way to get to another place. Now there can be all kinds of stuff and all kinds of rules of this place. There could be different rules of physics, there can be different um, ways that things work out, just very strange and unusual places. Sometimes they're pretty normal, sometimes they're pretty weird. Long story short, it's really cool. The other book that's really important is a linking book. Linking books are your way, basically, to get back home. Or for that matter, anywhere else. Uh, if you want to link between dimensions, you need to create a linking book, and that will allow the player to travel from one point in one dimension to another point in another. Let's go ahead and see how this works. So we're gonna wanna use linking books first as our demonstration example. Luckily, they're pretty easy to craft. All you need is a link panel. And you see you get a nice little achievement for crafting your first link panel. Simply bind that link panel into a piece of leather and you've got an unlinked linking book. That's pretty important. Always, always, Please, take my advice. Do not forget to make a linking book before you start playing around Miscraft. And I will explain to you why shortly. So what do you do with unlinked linking books? You right-click them. And you right-click them wherever you want to wind up in your dimension. They will record the dimension you're in, the XYZ coordinates of your player, and the direction you're facing. So if you want to, when you access this linking book, appear here facing this direction, you would simply right-click and it turns green. Once it's green, there's no way to switch it back to an unlinked linking book. You are stuck with this linking book, and you can see here it's telling you it links to the overworld. Cool, let's head down to the nether. But before I do that, let's see, do I have any wood? Hopefully. Wood. I wanna go ahead and make some sticks. I'll make a couple of them for now. Um, combine these sticks with 
some wood, and you'll get yourself a book stand from Miscraft. Now you can, uh, there's actually two different ways you can store your books, and it's really up to you. You can either go with book stand, or you can go with lectern. Uh, I'm going to get a couple book stands, and uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'll also go with lecterns, which are also pretty nice. Um, these guys are going to be what you place your books on so that you can uh, access them. So let's go take a look. Um, simply, let's head into the nether. Now, link books will not work inside the same dimension unless you create an intra dimensional linking book which I'll show you how to do uh, in a future episode or maybe a little bit later we'll see so basically here we are we can right click our link book and use it right here but what will happen is this link book when you access it it will not follow you to your dimension uh, of destination so basically when you place this down or uh, when you use it here in your inventory it's going to drop the link book on the floor which you don't want to have happen you don't want to lose this thing so go ahead and place down your book stand right there for example and put your linking book on it ta-da now the linking book is placed down on the book stand and ready to be accessed simply right click and it'll teleport you to the old world however before we do that why don't we create a linking book into the nether so if I just right clicked right here we've now got a linking book when I travel through this guy we're gonna land back in our base facing the direction we were facing in the exact coordinates of where we were when we clicked the book since this is going to be my um, Mistcraft room. I'll go ahead and place this here. In fact, maybe I'll put, hmm, I got an idea. Let's get one of these down. We'll put the lectern here and we'll put this guy right there like that. Cool. So now this book, which is labeled Nether, should lead me back to the Nether. Exactly where I was when I created the linking book. Cool. So now I have a nice easy way to get back and forth between the Nether and the overworld. I like it. Now let's take a look at creating our own age. Before you do much of anything with Miscraft, I recommend finding an ender pouch that you uh, store some stuff in, like your blue one, well that leads to my sort of, your white one here for example, and throw a linking book in there just so you have it in case. Believe me, getting trapped in a Mistcraft dimension is not a good time and it's not something you want to be a part of. So uh, make sure you've always got an extra link book on you. I uh, have one now stored in my white ender pouch, so I've always got an extra linking book ready to be used. And I'm going to go ahead and make another linking book that I'm actually going to bring with me for actual use in the dimension I'm about to create. So uh, typically with dimensions, you're going to want to go ahead and find some Mistcraft pages. Now I'm pretty sure I haven't found much of any yet. Well, I found one, so we can go ahead and use that as an example. Looks like I've got one Mistcraft page that I found somewhere. Maybe in a dungeon chest. I think it was maybe that Thomcraft one a long time ago. So what we're going to need to go ahead and get is a notebook to keep track of all these pages. Notebooks are easy to make. Three pieces of leather. I can just do that right here. Cool. And you're probably going to want to have multiple notebooks to store multiple things. Uh, I like to break them down by like the type of page that they are. So there's several types of pages that can help define the dimension you're about to create. Uh, this one happens to be a biome page. So what I'll do is I'll place my notebook in here. I'll label it biomes. And then you can place your uh, notebook over on the left side and place your page right over there. And you can middle click to shift or to sort it out so it looks nice and sharp. You can sort alphabetically, all kinds of cool sorting and stuff. So what you can do here is you've got biomes and you can have separate notebooks stored in different sections of this table. Pretty cool, right? And uh, I think it was rendering, maybe not. It used to render maybe notebooks. I think actually if the notebook's in here, it renders it. Yeah, look at that, there it is, cool. Um, pretty neat, right? So what we've got here then is the uh, notebook storing the thicket biome. Now I don't want to actually have a thicket biome, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Typically, if you'd want to create some uh, Mistcraft ages, you would combine different pages to define and write the book that you want to create the age with. We don't have many pages yet, so we're just going to have to create a randomly generated Mistcraft age. That's kind of a good place to start, because in any Mistcraft age, not in the overworld, but in any age created by Mistcraft, we'll find some um, ancient libraries that we can uh, typically find a good number of pages in. Cool. So let's get started. Uh, creating a um, random age is pretty simple. You simply need to get yourself a linking panel and you place that in the book binder. Now after this linking panel you would typically place all the pages that define the age. What type of biomes to have, how the sun should work, how the moon should work, how the earth should work, like all this crazy customization that you can make. But uh, if you don't define that customization it'll randomly pick it for you. Uh, so anything you don't tell it what to do, it's going to randomly choose. If you don't tell it to do anything, it's going to randomly choose everything. So we're going to call it My First Age. Sound like a plan? Um, and we're going to pull this descriptive book 
right out of the table. One-way ticket. That's reminding you that this is a one-way ticket. If you travel to this age and you do not have a linking book ready to bring you home, click, you are going to be uh, sorely, sorely upset with yourself. You can get stuck, possibly forever, in these ages. Dying will bring you to the spawn point of the age, not back to the overworld. There are some ways to escape if you do find yourself completely trapped, and I'll go over those shortly. But for now, let's get ready to travel. So to travel to your first age, simply take your descriptive book and right-click on it. And you can notice the descriptive books have a slightly different texture than the linking book, so you can see the difference between them. Let's go travel. I have no idea what we're about to find. Dun 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 dun. Gives it a minute for the age to load up. Because, you know, Minecraft. Here goes nothing. All right, so what do we find ourselves in? Typically, when you create a miscraft age, you're going to have this nice stone platform. This is kind of a good place to do two things. Number one, uh, go ahead and place down a book stand with your link book. Number two, uh, you might want to create a bookmark here so that you can find it uh, later. So let's go ahead and do that. Exit. Cool. Uh, we'll put it in the dire stuff marker so we can find the exit. Cool. So let's take a look around, shall we? Looks like we found ourselves in the middle of a dark forest and tropical rainforest uh, dimension. So those are the two um, biomes that we can see initially here. Um, looking pretty neat. Is this dark forest as well? Yeah, looks like it. So uh, sometimes these uh, places can be a little bit laggy depending on all the world gen that goes on. Oh, not a terrible looking place. The sky is a little bit of a yellowish uh, color. Looks like we might have, is that the moon or is that another sun? Might be two suns going on here, which is definitely possible. Uh, so yeah, we've got not a terrible place actually. It doesn't look too scary. I mean, you can get some really dangerous looking stuff. This one doesn't look too bad. Uh, so now that we've got our link book back, we can easily travel back to the overworld where it's safe and we've got our base and everything's happy, or we can head over back to our uh, lectern here and visit back to our first age. So why don't I travel around in my first age for a little bit and see if I can't find any interesting structures and let you know if there's anything cool out here to check out. Let's go exploring. Oh yeah, that's definitely the moon up there. Uh, it's getting dark out, and let me tell you, this place is a little creepy at night. Uh, you probably don't want to spend too much time here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am getting out, and I wouldn't mind checking out one more random age. This one's not bad, but I think there's some cooler stuff we can see. Let's, let's hope for a little bit of a better dice roll this time around, and see if we can't come up with something even cooler. So I'll just take my link panel, I'll come over here, and we'll call it uh, my... All right, let's cross our fingers for something a little better. At this point, we should probably start storing these things somewhere. So I'm just going to grab a nice iron chest. I've got a bunch of extras uh, that I'm no longer using. So we'll kind of stick this guy in a corner. I said in a corner. And we'll take my first age down, because I wasn't just thrilled with this age too much. Uh, we're going to pop him in here. So what do we have to do before we visit? my second age. Good question. I'm glad you asked. We need to create a link book because we left that link book back in my first age. You should always leave at least one link book in the age unless, you know, you want to be risky. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, a new link book out, create it, bring it with me. This is going to go to my second age. Let's see what we get. Oh, now this is an interesting age. This is something you're not going to be able to find in vanilla Minecraft too often. This is a cave world. This is a world pretty much completely made of caves. Um, now, here's an interesting little note for those of you who might not know the backstory of Mistcraft and some of like, the inside details. Wow, this place is cool. Uh, looks like we're in some kind of biome, seasonal forest over here. Oh, look at that. And we can see that the sky, it's its just because it's not, it's all a cave. Like, we're inside a cave. You can see as I'm traveling forward here, it's all a cave. Oh, look, there's a lot of lava down there. Wow, what, what biome is this? Still seasonal forest? creepy though. Oh man, this is a weird dimension, guys. Uh, we also got the Ender Starfield, and it looks like the sky color, uh, the, the Starfield color, the night sky, is a bright blue. Well, not not bright blue, but pretty blue. Uh, not, not the dark blue that you typically see. Um, so what do we got here? We've got Definitely looks like a cave world. And you can see that like we're basically in a cave. If we look up here, we can see that there is a roof to this age. So it's a giant cave. Oh, is that spheres in the distance? That does look like spheres. So spheres is a um, mistcraft structure. It basically creates these um, spheres of a particular type of block. And in this case, the spheres are made up of spruce wood. Interesting. 
very cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say that any water in this age is actually lava. That's something else you can do. You can replace the world generation, um, both the, the blocks that make up um, solid blocks like stone. Instead of having stone, you could have other blocks make up your world gen. So your terrain, instead of being made up of stone and dirt, can be made up of other stuff. Um, and you can do the same for liquids. So let me just make sure I have a, a waypoint here. We'll call it exit. Keep it in the Dyer's group stuff, dimension three as you can see. So if we take a look, um, you can see here um, when I was looking at the, the tick rate on the server, because anytime you generate a whole bunch of new terrain, the tick rate's going to drop. So I was kind of waiting for that to, to settle down. The My First Age is Dimension uh, 2. Cool. Uh, if we check out our TPS now, my second age is Dimension 3. One of the nice things about Miscraft Ages is if, if no one's in them, it's not going to be loaded up on the server. So we can see here that uh, my second age is doing a lot of work. It's still creating some world gen, it looks like, but uh, it also got rid of my first age. It's not actually currently loaded or doing anything on the server, so that's kind of nice. Uh, so we have some cool spheres. We have a nice place to explore. I'm going to look around. I'm not sure how I'm going to do in terms of finding any... Um, of the of the um, libraries that I told you guys about, but we'll see if I do happen across any that would be neat. Wow, this age is cool looking. Watch out for gravel falling from the ceiling. Um, watch out for lots of enemies, as you might expect, because it's so dark. Uh, yeah, just overall some cool and crazy stuff in this age. What is this? Oh, uh, that's the um, the essence pool from uh, Ars Magica. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, let me look around a little bit. I'll see if I can't find anything cool in this age. Wow, this place is nice looking. So here's something that can sometimes happen that's interesting in Miscraft Ages. Uh, you can actually have, and we can see that it actually spawned here. This looks like to be like an underground mine shaft type situation. We can even see like there's a little treasure chest here. Let's see if there's anything good in it. Oh boy, I'm running out of fuel. Hold on. Jetpack power low. Uh, let's see what's in here. Anything good? Just some creosote. I don't mind taking that. Uh, single use safari net. Boring. Work cart. Boring. All right, so uh, I do need to get out of here, so I don't want to drain my power reserves too much. I should have something in here that can help, though, um, in you, maybe. Let's see, what do I have? The drill. should start draining power from the drill. That's like a little backup battery, see? Nice. So let's, uh, let's get back, actually, and charge up our stuff, and then we'll come back here and explore a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, we had, like, a little underground uh, minecart, you know, system here that spawned, um, but it's neat. Cool. Meet you guys back at the base. I'm going to recharge my uh, suit and then see what other cool stuff we can find here in this age. And as a matter of fact, it, it does occur to me maybe I should have some proper backup batteries. So I'm going to make a flux capacitor. Uh, these guys are going to be able to store uh, redstone flux energy. Now, this one only stores 80k RF, but don't worry. We're going to upgrade him from uh, the lead one to the hardened one. We're going to need some invar ingots to get hardened, just like we would for the hardened energy cell. So think of these as like portable energy cells. They can store uh, energy, and they'll actually uh, charge any items on the hot bar. And it should use um, this thing. It should uh, you know work with my suit. So let's see redstone flux capacitor so redstone versions like the next highest and the uh the highest here that can store like a, a massive amount of power is the enderium one and i'm pretty sure i've got some pyrothium dust and some enderium ingots remember we taught our a system how to make these last episode so i'm going to go ahead and just get the top tier uh of battery power the uh the the resonant energy flux capacitor guy this thing charges up very quickly by the way so don't be surprised if your energetic infuser starts draining pretty quickly the rf from there um but he does have an overall storage capacity of like 10 million rf so pretty awesome uh we'll let this guy charge up and uh, i can put my hammer away now so let's watch what happens i didn't mean to put it in that one Where did you go? Oh, you're probably not put away yet. Come on now. You'll get there eventually. Are you full yet? Almost. There we go. A nice full resin energy cell. So right now, 50k. If I grab this guy, oh, 1 million. Nice. So uh, good translation there of power. And I think this can be anywhere in my inventory, and it should still count it. So you can see on the top left there. Very cool. All right, so that should uh, hold me over for quite a while. Nice, I like it. Uh, let's go ahead and put this thing away in its proper place and go explore that age a little bit more. I would really like to find a library to show you guys what they look like. Oh, it also looks like it's snowing in this age, but because it's a, a underground cave system, in fact, if you do drill up, um, you will eventually hit the surface. So there is a surface to this world, as you can see on the, the map there, um, but, you know, 
it's mostly a cave system. You have to get up pretty high. We're at Y level 80 and we're still underground. Um, so behind the scenes, this is actually using the uh, nether generation. It basically creates um, a world that's a normal biome, but uses the nether uh, style of world generation. So this is basically how the nether generates, but with netherrack and stuff. So, ooh, is that? No, that's nothing. All right, back in a few exploring. Oh, and another good tip might be to put a portal exit right over here by your book. So if you really want to explore like crazy, you can go nuts and uh, just jump through a portal when you're ready to head back home. All right, guys, so I didn't have any luck finding um, in that dimension any libraries. I looked around for a little bit. But frankly, at the end of the day, I don't like looking around in dimensions for uh, books because, number one, libraries are few and far between to find. It's really difficult to track them down. When you do, you're only going to find a handful of pages. You're really not going to find much of what you want. A good option for this is actually villagers. Villagers can trade um, a good number. Pretty much every page that you can find can be found uh, by villager trading. Uh, however, in order for us to trade with villagers, we need uh, emeralds and we need villagers. Uh, there's a particular villager that's actually added by Mistcraft and he looks different from your normal villager. Uh, he's the one we're looking for. We can actually see that we did find a Mistcraft um, house here a while back. I'm pretty sure I came in and chopped down all the bookcases, but basically this is a Mistcraft writing desk in here, which indicates that this is a Mistcraft uh, villager house. But um, there's no Mistcraft villagers in this uh, town, so I don't know what happened to him. Maybe he got lost. Who knows? Uh, but what I want to do is maybe consider a good way uh, to start maybe some villager trading and some some villager work to kind of get uh you know access to villagers there's other mods that add villagers that had like really nice features so uh you know we probably want to have some villager trading mechanics going on at some point anyway so maybe now is not a bad time to start so uh i'm going to start considering a good solution to villager trading so we need two things we need lots of emeralds and we need lots of villagers um so let's see what we can come up with all right guys i have a couple ideas on what we can do Ooh, how'd you land inside my house I don't mind, I'll take it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, though, we've kind of hit the wrapping up point for this episode. So what I think I'll do is we'll uh, we'll put a pause on here for a little bit. I need to start working on, um, it's probably going to be a multi-episode progress plan to, to get ourselves the stuff we're going to need to get lots of emeralds and lots of villagers. So there's several methods we can create. We uh, can basically go with, you know, vanilla villager breeding, which you guys have probably seen many other YouTubers do. I know, like, Doc M has had, like, a really, really good um, tutorial on how to breed villagers. Um, um, and a couple other guys out there have done a lot of really good tutorials on villager breeding, but we're playing modded Minecraft here, so we're going to want to go ahead and uh, do things our own way. We're going to want to come up with some cool machines that can automate the breeding of villagers, get us a whole bunch of them, and maybe even just make it a little bit faster. However, those machines require a little bit of infrastructure, so I'm going to start out next episode with the basic infrastructure of what we're going to need for those machines. It's actually going to be um, a, a, a double use, actually, because it's going to give us the infrastructure we need for the machines, but it's also going to give us access to some other cool stuff. So for now, this will be Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We've got uh, a big plan coming up to work on uh, villager breeding. So hopefully by the time you get the next world download, let's see, this was episode 57. So I've got, you know, let's say three more episodes to go until uh, we have to do another world uh, download for you guys. So maybe I can get most, if not all of it done by then. All right, guys, take it easy.